Hey everybody, in this AP Chem series video, we're going to take a deeper look at the brownsted lowry theory of acids and bases. So remember, in the last video, we introduced this theory and saw that acids are proton donors like this HNO3 that in the presence of water will donate an H plus to that water, creating an acidic solution, while bases are proton acceptors like ammonia here is going to accept an H plus from water, turning the solution basic. In this video, we'll just go a little bit deeper, talking about some terms and some ways to identify bronsted lowry acids, and bases. So let's start off looking at some terms. With this theory, there's lots of different vocabulary that you have to be familiar with. Like conjugate pairs, this refers to a particle from the reactants side of the equation, like HNO3, and showing what that particle turns into on the products side. So HNO3 turns into NO3 minus, those two would be considered conjugate pairs, so would H2O and H3O+. Each pair is composed of a protonated and a deprotonated form. Obviously, protonated means it has the H plus still attached. Deprotonated means it does not. So for the two we've identified so far, HNO3 is the protonated form. NO3- minus is the deprotonated for the water and H3O+. Plus. Of course, H3O+, plus is the protonated form, and water is the deprotonated form. These next four are really important, acid, base, conjugate acid, and conjugate base. We already know that HNO3 is functioning as the acid. I'm going to label that with a capital A. Well, that acid's conjugate pair on the product side is labeled that way. It's called the conjugate, since it's the conjugate pair. And it changes identity from an acid into a base. So NO3 minus is the conjugate base of the acid HNO3. And kind of the weird part here is HNO3 we know is the acid because it's donating the H+, but that also means that water is gaining that H+, or accepting that H+. So in other words, water here is functioning as a base. Following a similar pattern, water's conjugate pair on the product side is given that label of conjugate, and it changes identity from base in the reactants to acid in the product. So H3O plus is the conjugate acid, of the base H2O. Let's try applying those same labels to the ammonia reaction. I know that ammonia is the base, so it is accepting the H plus and water is donating that H plus. That means ammonia is my base. Here H2O is functioning as the acid. They're conjugate pairs. We can label those next. So NH3's conjugate pair, of course, is NH4 plus. That makes it the conjugate acid. Remember, it changes identity, starts as the base, changes into conjugate acid. Water's conjugate pair is OH minus, so that's going to be the conjugate base, changing identity from acid to conjugate base. Hydronium ion is the name given to this very important H3O plus particle. Remember, that's the particle produced by any acid in water that's actually causing the solution to be acidic and giving it a lower pH. And lastly, we've got amphoteric. Sometimes you might also see this as amphiprotic, depending on the source, but either version means a particle that can function as an acid or a base, depending on the situation. Here we've got one example of that already, H2O, which with HNO3 functions as a base, but with NH3 can function as an acid. There's other examples of amphoteric particles too, and we'll learn more about those as we go further. So those terms make up some of the key ideas for this video. Make sure to pause and take some time, write those down. So this theory opens up a whole new world of things that can be acids and bases according to this new definition. So we should talk about how to identify them. Identifying acids is pretty simple. They're going to look a whole lot like you expect an acid to look. So you just want to spot those ionizable hydrogen atoms that can easily break off and get donated. And if you're looking at a chemical formula, these acids look just like you would expect. That hydrogen is usually written first in the formula. There is a class of molecules called carboxylic acids where you might see this COOH group. It's the hydrogen attached to the oxygens that will ionize off. The hydrogens on the carbons will not ionize. For bases, you want to look for molecules containing nitrogen groups like this NH2 or negative ions like CO3-2. Some examples of bases would be the ammonia we've seen so far. Here's something called ethylamine. Notice the NH2 group. My hydrogen is going to attach to the nitrogen there. And this PO4-3 is going to be very happy to gain an H plus and function as a base. I'll also point out that 
those hydroxide bases like lithium hydroxide or magnesium hydroxide, those are actually better explained using the Arrhenius theory. They do not involve NH plus transfer. So if you're trying to justify these things producing alkaline solutions, you're going to stay away from Bronsted Lowry altogether and just show the simple Arrhenius dissociation. Make sure to pause and take some time to write down these key ideas as well. And that actually wraps it up for this video on Bronsted-Lowry theory. Thanks a lot for watching, and here is a brief summary.